Right, I've already done a review on the MOD survival knife, but this time I'm going to do a review and test on the uh, actual British Army, the actual issued British Army MOD survival knife, okay? Um, and not only that, the star of the show is this sheath as well. So I'm going to go into that just a little bit. And um, these two knives are actually exactly the same. Uh, even though this is made by Webtex, there is a few differences, okay? Uh, the difference is the company, this is Webtex, this is Genuine British Army. Uh, the colour, this is in black and this has got a, a wooden handle there. Uh, the spine is different. Actually, this one is 4mm and this one, the Genuine British Army one, is 6mm, okay, in thickness. And uh, the steel, this is carbon steel, and I'm not sure about the steel on this one, but it was in the garage for many, many, many years doing nothing, and uh, it never rusted. And someone said that it could be stainless steel, so I'm not sure, but there's a chance that it could be stainless steel. So, uh, And uh, the sharpness, okay? When you bought MOD survival knives back in the day, I believe, and certainly this one, they arrived in the post blunt. But this one, recently, 2024 if you like, uh, it arrived in the post sharp. Okay, so maybe all of them are coming sharp now. So, um, right, so I'll just get on with that and uh, and do the, do the specs of this, which is basically the same as this, I suppose. And then uh, I'll go into the sheath first and then just test this to make sure it's all, all okay. As good as this one, I suppose. Right, okay, let's do it. Right, now for the specs, I'll get through this as quick as I can. Um, now, this, the blade is 7 inches, and the overall length is 12 and a half inches. The steel is carbon phosphated, and the spine is uh, 6 millimeters, or half an inch thick, if you like. Uh, the handle is a hardwood handle. Uh, this is I've got this information from the um, the website now that I bought it from. Okay, and uh, the tang is full, full tang. Best you can get. There you go. If anybody just doesn't know that sort of thing, and uh, the lanyard loophole there is at the end. We we'll put a bit of rope through. Um, it's a Scandinavian grind. And I bought it from uh, online from a company called the Sheffield Cutlery Shop, and it arrived sharp. Okay, and uh, I'll just show you what it says on the side of the blade there. If you can, if I can. It's uh, well anyway. It says uh, it, well, it's the NATO number on the top. A J Adams underneath in 1999, and the old crow's foot there which is all British Army stuff has got on. So there you go, that's that. And if anybody wants to um, fake that crow's foot, you'll be in jail for a thousand years, okay? <laughs> so there you go. And uh, yeah, it's illegal, apparently. So uh, anyway, um, now for the sheath. And the sheath, right. I bought it off Etsy in, two, in this year, 2024, it costs £85, okay, and it's a very high quality uh, sheath, uh, it's got uh, it's unblemished thick leather, there you go, and I didn't get any, any information off the, off the maker because I never told him that I was going to make a YouTube video, so there you go, so what you see here is really what you get. Um, the stitching is absolutely beautiful, it's perfect, and it's got the old loop there in the right place, the nice stud there, and uh, the lanyard loop is solid, there's no snap buttons, it's just a proper loop, and uh, there you go, that's the back end, superb stitching and all that and there's the maker's name 
or you know his stamp if you like it's Glen R. Hale from Nottingham UK don't know whether you can see that there you go and uh, I haven't got any more information so I didn't contact him to get any information so um, it's, it, you can see it's all buffed up beautifully and it's glued on the edge there or whatever he does or she does uh, you know it's it's absolutely perfect and the knife slips in perfect um, it doesn't make any sound coming out or going in and there's no resistance and there's no looseness so in my eyes it's absolutely perfect
Right, now I'll do a bit of battering. Battering, battening. Yeah, there you go. They all do that, don't they? And now for some feather sticks. There you go, that's one. Obviously, you can see I'm doing it from the dry side and not the, the damp outer side, so I'll put that there. Grab another one, build it some more. I'm doing this on a 45 degree angle, so I've cut them in quarters, like you said, but I cut, I, like you've seen, but I cut them again as well. There's a few slivers on the floor there. Right, I've got a, so I've got some of this this stuff. What is it called? Pro fat rope stick. So I'll have a go at that. So I've cut a bit off there. It's probably getting damp already in the on the uh, on the ground. I'll stick it there. So I'll, I'll cut a bit of this.
see what happens. So I suppose I'm just piddling about now, but I mean, it does throw sparks, but not very good. I think it's because of the coating or it's not sharp or something. I don't know. It didn't seem to be very good. Try it that way. Well, maybe, maybe not. That maybe if I had a softer composite ferro rod, that might do it. But because uh, these big ones are hard composites, so they're harder to get sparks out of. But they last longer. Not having that. Right. Okay. Oh, the wood's going up, a little bit of wood's going up. Yeah, that actually caught on the wood then. Oh, maybe it's not a fail after all. And the smoke is coming towards me as per usual. There you go. There's something anyway. It's pretty good. That'll do. Well, there you go then. The sparks don't come off this knife. You'll have to use uh, a ferro rod, ferro rod and a steel that goes with it. But you should have one of these with this anyway. So there you go. That's that. Right, I think I, you need to, you will get sparks from it a bit more than I showed. You need to press more harder. And you would do that in a long-term situation anyway, you get a bit stronger and stuff and seasoned into it. Um, what I got here is a stone, that is stone there. I've got a bit of dried sort of pine needles there. So what I'm going to do, because I've got a bit of sort of a, a harder surface, I got the one of these sort of, these, these like a, a metal, an aluminium tube and uh, this rope that's sort of covered in something, I think is wax or something, I don't know, but I'll see if I can get that going. They're not brilliant, but they are good, but I'm not sure if I can get it going with a spark, but I've got a, what I'm saying is I've got a harder surface there. I might just, I could press it hard and I might just 
get more sparks out of it. <laughs> God, I did, I did a minute ago. <laughs> So I've got a harder surface here, that's stone, so I can sort of I fluff, fluff it up a bit. That's what I should have done, just fluff it up a bit. And see, I'm just sort of showing that you can get the spot, but it's not very good. That's, yeah, I'll put that there because it's dry. There you go. Marvellous. And then you can light your fire then with that. Renew the rope eventually. And uh, to put it out, you just do that. And then it goes out. So there you go. Um, and that is that. The cheap version as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what I'm saying is, uh, it'll it'll do sparks. Oh, well, not okay, really. Not as good as, not as good as this. But um, I suppose you need a hard surface. So you can really press hard, you know. So uh, yeah, it's so it's just you get the idea. You're better off having using this than uh, using the back of this. Okay. <laughs> right, I'll just give it a go with that Webtex MOD survival knife. I don't know whether you see that. It's got Webtex written across there. But uh, this one, from what I can remember, worked pretty good. Yeah, it works better. Well, this one throws up sparks anyways. <laughs> I suppose uh, this one needs roughing up a bit to get it more sharper. Yeah. Don't know, it feels the same, but it's, yeah, okay. This one works pretty good. I'm not trying to light it up, I'm just showing it'll throw sparks, you know. Oh, it's going then. There you go, something's a light. Blew it out. But this one just ain't having it. Nah. But that one works pretty good. There you go. Well, uh,
you won't get one of these anymore they I've looked and I couldn't find any so there you go I own the last one in the world <laughs> Yeah, well there you go then. That's something in the review. That needs roughing up. Needs filing or something. It doesn't work very good. And final thoughts. Uh, just to say it's worth carrying a bit of dry wood with you in a little leather container like this if you're going to make fires and a few other tricks to light the fire. I never used this wood in here by the way. Um, and also with the knives or knife, um, I put a bit of uh, inner tube from a mountain bike on the handle because it digs in when you're chopping the wood just by there, uh, just because of the way it's made. That's raised a little bit and it dug in just a little bit it wasn't awful but it, it's worth putting a inner tube from a bicycle on the handle like that and as for the uh, the new sheath uh, it's fantastic um, I didn't say though I don't think it it's made to order and um, it takes around about a month to arrive uh, a month maybe a little more I can't remember now uh, but it actually arrived 10 days before the date. Okay, so that's pretty good. And as for the sheath, other uh, sheath, now this new sheath is on the genuine British Army knife. Uh, the old sheath of this genuine British Army knife is on the Webtex knife, as you can see there. And the old sheath from the Webtex knife is on this knife here, which is the Becker BK7. So there you go. And I'll get, I'll unstitch that and put it down there. So. Uh, I'll get a professional to do that, I think. And there you go. So take from this video what you will. And um, like, share, subscribe if you want. And thanks for watching this far. Cheers. <laughs>